So this phone was just disappointing. And this is the Samsung Galaxy A53. And I've had quite a few Samsungs. I love Samsung devices. Don't get me wrong, this is not a knock against the brand. I enjoy their products a lot. And I enjoy this to some degree. But I don't enjoy it for what I paid for it and I'm gonna tell you why that is. You kinda just seen one of the reasons right there. Did you see that animation? When I just can't, there it goes again. Now, there it goes again. So you just see kind of that, that lag, that delay. Now, I understand that this is not your high-end Samsung phone. I understand they're providing you a lot of features for this money, but we have to take a look at the competition. Let me tell you, the competition that is coming out now is just performing very well. And so the Samsung Galaxy A53, over my time that I've had it, has been pretty disappointing to me. Um, I like scrolling through and see, feeling like it's smooth and all, and then when I start opening things up and I start getting some delays like that, you see that stuff? It's just, it happens all day when using this phone. Now, when you look at something like an SE, you also get, you know, a actually a premium kind of feel around the edges and you get a more premium backing. Now, some people really enjoy the plastic because if you drop it, it's more durable and stuff like that. And I don't blame you. Just slap a case on this and you probably won't care too much about how that feels in the hand anymore. I actually like this case right here. I got a little bit of a, you know, a little place to prop the finger and stuff like that little stand right here action and stuff like that and while i i gotta say a couple things are still pretty cool about what you get at this price point is an oled display you do get yourself a nice landscape mode so this can be quite useful to a lot of people it's just we're in 2022 and the performance has been something that has really got to me now this phone right here does run an exynos chip it's actually a five nanometer exynos 1280 but and, and it's not a slow phone, don't get me wrong. It's just, it feels choppy. And that's my big gripe with it because the iPhone SE again at this price point does run far better. And there's even some other competitors coming out from Xiaomi, Poco and things like that that run far better than this phone. Now, some of the pros of this device, you know, that did not disappoint me, we are talking about disappointments, but there's a couple things that didn't disappoint me and that is, you still get a ton of advanced features here in the Galaxy A53. So I do appreciate that, but you just seen that delay once again. I do appreciate that, but this doesn't give you 4K at 60 frames a second when it comes to the camera. Now, why does that irk me a little bit? Because the SE provides that, and that's why it irks me a little bit. So I kind of want to, the way this phone is kind of marketed is like kind of giving you a lot of bang for your buck. And it does, you get a macro mode, you get a 2X, you get a ultra wide, you get multiple different angles of shooting video and photo on this phone. And the results are pretty good. So the camera was not the area that really tweaked with me. You could see you got food modes, panoramic, single take video, slow motion or single take. We do have the hyperlapse. This is a lot, you can do pro. It's kind of like a cheaper S22 to be quite fair with you, like a really, at the bottom s22 there's also cheaper phones than this like like the other a series phones so this is not the absolute bottom of the barrel for samsung but definitely when i look at even some motorola phones some oneplus nord phones some of those just perform better straight up and the pixel a series like the 5a and the upcoming 6a they just perform better. There's just no way to slice it. Now, one thing that was quite nice about this phone right here is that they do give you a nice SIM card, but if you flip it around right there, you'll find yourself micro SD card support. So didn't even get that on my higher end Samsung phone. So did appreciate that that came on here, but it's kind of like, what's the point when we have a higher end Samsung phone having issues using phones today, <laughs> look at me. But when you get, when you get a higher end, Samsung phone when you want to really use that storage, but you're getting it here on their cheaper phone So it's not really a knock to this device, but definitely wish I could see that on the higher device the higher-end devices So good screen does have a pretty nice overall package of a size the amount of cameras you get the battery is awesome on here but it just doesn't add up when you factor in how 
this kind of feels day to day. So I don't really get why a lot of the media sources are saying this is one of the best deals you can have because honestly, it gets choppy enough for me that I just get annoyed with this device. So overall, I would say this phone is a little bit disappointing when you consider that Samsung has the S21 FE line. And I just think that Samsung could go a little bit stronger on the next version of the A series and really go to town on the performance. Like I say, it is a good option for 5G. You have Bluetooth 5.1 on here. You have USB-C. You do have SD card support. But one of the main reasons is that it, it doesn't feel premium. It doesn't really give you a great performance. The in-display fingerprint sensor is also nowhere near as accurate as the one I find on the higher end stuff. And I, again, I'm not expecting all that. At least you get fast charging 25 watts. But again, there's just that the thing that's missing is the optimization and speed. And it really drags this device down because all I got to simply do is go buy a yesteryear Samsung flagship for the same money, a used or refurbished, even on Samsung's refurbished, you know, section or where they sell their older stuff that people traded in and get a better phone. So this one, a little bit disappointed. I'm not trying to say it's a horrible device it's not but i just don't get the hype why a lot of media sources push this as one of the best deals i know it's got high pixel density big oled display but this these things have there's a lot of phones with these things with oled displays bright displays you know yeah you get samsung software you do get a few years of updates which is pretty darn good but again there's just so many other options on the used market the se a little bit faster this has a lot of potential, but they could go up to like eight gigs of RAM. They can put a Snapdragon in here that makes this faster. But don't be thrown, up, thrown off by like how this has the 120 hertz display because it's, it's bogged down by optimization and overall speed. So if you're wondering why didn't I release a review on this phone a while ago, it's simply because I was disappointed and I had to gather my thoughts and I continue to be as I continue to use this phone and go through, you know, every day just trying it out. It just... I honestly just wanted to switch back to my other Samsung phone. If you want to see any other speed tests, comparisons, video reviews with this phone, let me know down below in the comments section. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.